section 19.3, the electric potential difference created by point charges. So let's start by looking at this picture where we have a positive point charge and we bring in another test charge, a uh, positive point charge here. If the test charge is near our original point charge, it's going to experience a force, right? Because they're both positive charges, the force is going to be pushing away. And we know that if this test charge was moved between different points, that it would have, there'd be some amount of work done in having to move it, like so. For instance, between work and moving it from A to point B. Now back in 2A, we found that we could get the work if we took the force times the distance. It turns out the math is a little more complicated in this case, uh, and it would involve some integral calculus. So we can just jump to the end result that looks somewhat similar to force times distance, right? So if we were to think of work as being force times the distance, taking into account the direction, the force we remember is kq times q naught divided by the distance between them squared. So if we multiply it by a distance, that removes one of those r's. It's sort of a shortcut method of thinking about it. It's a little bit hand wavy, but that tells us that the work in moving from point A over to point B can be found with KQ Q naught divided by RA, the distance from the charge to point A, and minus KQ Q naught divided by RB, which is the distance from the original charge to point B. And this work would then be positive uh, because it is in the same direction as the force. We then want to connect it to electric potential. We know electric potential, the potential difference is going to be the negative of the work done divided by the charge. So if we take the negative of this result and also divide out the test charge itself, we get this simpler expression, KQ, the original charge divided by RB minus KQ over RA, and that equals VB minus VA. So now we could do some comparison and say, hey, look, KQ over RB, that's going to correspond to my V sub B. And my V sub A will correspond to this KQ over RA. And so this, we've now derived how we can calculate the electric potential of a point charge. The electric potential of a point charge V can be calculated with K times the amount of charge that that exhibits divided by the distance from the charge to whatever point of interest we have. Now, one thing to note here is this Q is not an absolute value. So the sign does matter here if it's positive or negative. And that will change if you're going to have a positive or a negative potential. So positive charges, as shown here, create a more positive potential and negative charge then creates a negative potential going the opposite way. Let's check out an example of this. So example five, the potential of a point charge. Using a zero reference potential at infinity, determine the amount by which a point charge of four times 10 to the minus eight coulombs alters the electric potential at a spot 1.2 meters away when the charge is A positive and B negative. So we're going to work with this zero reference potential of infinity. That's something we can just assume. That's what allows us to say the potential is just KQ over R. So that simplifies things. So rather than having to deal with a potential difference, we're saying, OK, we're calculating the potential at this point relative to infinitely far away, where it's 0. So we can just calculate with our equation that we saw before that v is equal to kq over r. So now let's try it. So we have v equals kq over r. So we put in our k constant times the charge divided by the distance from the charge to the point of interest, 1.2 meters, and we get positive 300 volts. So that tells us it's like an uphill of 300 volts relative to, if you go infinitely far away, the potential is zero. Now, what changes for part B where we have a negative charge? Well, if it's a negative charge, the only thing that changes is our Q. The Q becomes negative, and so the overall potential also becomes negative. And so we now have a negative 300 volts 
again, relative to the same reference point that if you're infinitely far away, there's no positive or negative potential. It's like flat land. So it's only when you have a negative charge that you get that negative uh, valley and the positive charge creates a mountain. Okay, so now that we've seen a couple of those examples, let's look at a more interesting one where we have two different charges. So the total electric potential. At locations A and B, find the total electric potential. So this is two different questions in one. We'll start with solving for the total electric potential at A. So if we want to find the electric potential at A, V sub A, we're going to have to add the electric potential from one charge, this positive 8, as well as the electric potential from the other charge, 2. So VA is equal to V1 plus V2. And we could then fill in for each of these. It's going to be our K times our Q1 divided by R1 plus KQ2 all divided by R2. Where remember, none of this is squared. These are just subscripts that I have in there to help us label it. So what would R1 be? Well, R1 is the distance from charge 1 to A, so it is just this 0 0.2 meters. What about R2? R2 is going to be the full distance from, from charge 2 to point A, so that's a full 0.6 meters. So that's one difference between the two potentials. What's the other difference? Well, notice they have the same amount of charge. They're both 8 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs in magnitude, but the opposite sign. So we'll find that the second one is going to come out with a negative. OK, so that gives us some overview here. Now, what happens in part B? If we take a look at B, we now want the distance from 1 to b and the distance from 2 to b. How do those distances compare? Those distances are both 0 0.4 meters. So the distances are the same. The magnitudes of the charges are the same. The only thing different is the sign of the charge. So at b, we expect they should cancel out. Let's take a look at the actual math now. Right, so here we have for VA, where we have added together our V1 with the positive 8 um, nanocoulombs divided by 0 0.20 meters, plus the V2, which notice does have this negative sign in here. And so it ends up subtracting from v a, V1 to get an overall result of plus 240 volts, where the positive uh, influence is larger because it's closer to the positive charge. So that's why we get a positive potential. In B, since the distances are now equal and the magnitudes of the charges are the same, just with opposite sign, just as expected, the potentials cancel out. And this is the point where there is no potential. We could imagine drawing this uh, either way and it would become negative as we move closer to the negative charge and be going positive as we went the other way. So it's a big slope here that happens to have a zero point right at the middle. Now that we've seen this zero point, let's look at one more example, a conceptual example of where is the potential zero. So two point charges are fixed in place. The positive charge is plus 2q and the negative charge is negative q. On the line that passes through the charges, how many places are there at which the total potential is zero? So I want you to think about this, come up with an answer, A, B, C, D, or E, before you move on. So go ahead, pause the video now. Okay, trusting you have your answer. Let's take a look. Well, the first place that I think to check is between the charges, because that's where we just saw it in the last example. But in this case, is it going to be right in the middle? Well, let's check the setup, right? We know that the total potential is going to be uh, the potential of one plus the potential of the other. And we know that the potential for each of them could be calculated with K times Q over R. But for one, that's K times 2Q 
over R1. And for 2, it's k times negative q. So that has the negative, which will allow it to cancel. Sorry, that got a little messy. Negative q all over r2. So because the positive charge is twice as big, it's going to need to be a distance that's twice as big away. So it will be closer to the negative charge. And if the distance is twice as big over here, as the distance from the negative charge to it, then that will cancel out the effect of the double charge so that the total potential can be zero at that point. All right, so on this line, I can think of two other primary places to check, right? One is off to the left, and the other is off to the right. Now, if we go to the one on the left, Notice we are much closer to the positive charge and much farther from the negative charge, no matter what. That means that the positive charge, which is already a larger potential because it's positive, is also going to have a smaller distance. So it's going to be an even larger potential. So there's no way this can be 0. In contrast, if we go to the right side, now the distance to the negative charge is less than the distance to the positive charge. The distance to the positive charge is twice as far away, and so it ends up being the equal contributions to the potential. So the potential can be zero if you're as long as you're closer to that smaller charge. So thus we end up having two places where the electric potential can come to zero. So that's a great instance of applying our knowledge. And one thing that's really useful to note here is this is different than the electric field or the forces where the vectors in the direction mattered. Now that we're talking about electric potential difference, all that we care about is if it's positive or negative. We don't have to worry about direction, which is awesome. All right, we're going to continue on with some uh, places where the electric potential is constant in the next video. So stick around.